Join me and come and learn how to make Kate Eastwood's Primrose Placemat. It's super easy, it's super fun. Let's get started. So to begin, we make a slip knot. I just make one like this, just round my fingers, round my two fingers there, and just pull the end through the loop and pull. But you can make a slip knot however you prefer to make a slip knot. Now, we've got a video that's specially all about waffle stitch and we're going to just put a link up here so that you can follow along if you want to have a little practice first. But this placemat is worked in waffle stitch and waffle stitch works on a multiple of three plus two for turning. And so what we usually do is if you're making a scarf or a cushion or something, you just chain as many multiples of three as you want the placemat to be or anything else. For this placemat, we have chained 66 plus two for turning, which is a total of 68. Now I'm just going to do a small um, swatch to show you here. So I'm going to chain multiples of three. So I've got three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Let's have another bit. One, two, three, another three, I think, just to give us a, a nice size swatch. One, two, three. All the details of this pattern you'll be able to find in the description below. So don't forget to check the description for the full pattern. Um, so I've done my multiples of three for the size of the swatch I'm going to make, and then I'm going to add two for turning. So once you have chained your, let's just imagine this is 68, your number of chains, the first thing we're going to do is work a row of US double crochet, UK trebles, all the way along. And we're going to start off by working into the fourth chain from the hook. So it's one, two, three, we're going to work into there. So I'm going to yarn around one, two, three, four, put my hook into the chain and pull up a loop. Yarn around, pull through two, yarn around, pull through two. And that is a US double crochet UK treble. And I'm just going to work a single stitch of those double crochet US UK trebles all the way along this chain. So we do yarn over into the chain, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. You see those stitches appearing. So we work along all the way along here. Now, I have, this is an original pattern by Kate Eastwood, um, who has a fantastic blog called Just Pootling. And you can find lots of fabulous books by Kate that have all kinds of brilliant home projects in. This is one of her earliest patterns. So I'm just working these stitches all the way along while I'm explaining this. The, the placemat that we're doing is a smallish placemat and you could make, um, you know, one of these for everybody that's going to be sitting around the table or you could just lengthen this particular bit of placemat and turn it into a table runner if you wanted to and cover it in flowers all the way down your Easter table or your springtime table or for a special birthday or just to brighten up your kitchen. And the waffle stitch also makes a very good sort of dense um, texture for a washcloth or a dishcloth. It doesn't have to be for a table. So you can use this um, as a sort of like a prototype for anything else you want in your house. So I'm just working along here, putting these US double crochet, UK trebles, all the way down the first row. Um, this is Paintbox Yarns Cotton Aran. There are about 64 shades to choose from. It's absolutely lovely cotton that wears and wears and it has a really lovely colour palette so you can match up. This colour I'm using here is Duck Egg, um, but there are lots of gorgeous shades you can use to match your eating space or your kitchen. 
And I thought I'd do it with this sort of lovely duck egg and some flowers to make um, something lovely for spring. And because it's cotton, it's washable. So if somebody manages this to tip something all the way down the middle of it, you can put it in the washing machine. Right, so I pop the last stitch in there. Okay. So we've got our first row. And remember, for the placemat, you need 68 chains. So you'll have a lot more stitches going on than I have here. This is just a swatch to show you. So we turn the work and I'm going to chain two. And the reason I'm chaining two rather than three is just that my tension is quite loose. So if you know your tension, if you normally chain three for a treble, UK treble, US double crochet, that's absolutely fine. I've chained two at the beginning of row two to come ready to start the second row. And the first thing I'm going to do is to put a US double crochet, UK treble, into the first stitch. Now, the next two stitches are going to work into the bottom of these two trebles here, these two double crochet US's down here. And instead of working into the top of the stitch, we're going to work around these two posts, these two stitches. And we call these front post stitches. I'm going to take my yarn around and then go down into the row below, bring my hook underneath the post of the stitch below, yarn around, pull through, and you've got three on the hook, yarn around, pull through two, yarn around, pull through two, and you'll see that that stitch is raised. Some people call these raised stitches or front post stitches, but they form the beginnings of the waffle. And we're going to do the same thing in the next stitch. We're going to do a front post double crochet US, a front post treble UK into this next stitch. So yarn around, we come around the stitch below, bring your yarn around, pull it through. So you've got three on your hook, Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. Whoopsie. And so you can see, already you can see, these two stitches are sticking up a bit. They're lifting up. And the regular double crochet US UK treble is sitting behind. Now, because we're working on a multiple of three, I'm going to do the next one. It's just a regular double crochet. Now, for the next two stitches, two raised front post double crochets, front post triples if you're in the UK. Yarn around under the post below, pull up a loop, and you do sort of have to pull up, you know, a little bit more of a loop to get along the other side to be even. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, we do that again, yarn around, around the post below, pull up a loop, nice and tall, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And can you see, we've got these two stitches coming forward and that regular treble stitch, UK treble, is sitting at the back and these two front posts are leaning forward. Then I'm going to put another regular US double crochet UK treble and then two raised up front post double crochets, front post triples if you're in the UK. Next and then a regular. Just into the top of the stitch. And when we turn this around, you're going to see how this is beginning to form a waffle. Then the next two are front post. So come down under the front post, put up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and another front post. So we're working in those threes. And then the next one. It's just a regular stitch, 
into the top of the stitch and then two front post stitches yarn over down around that front post and then the next one is a regular one Two more front posts. One. Then we have a regular stitch. I'm just going to work one more triple into that last um, chain three or chain two in this case. So I'm going to chain two and turn around. And if you see there, the first sort of ridge of the waffle is beginning to form. You can see where those proud stitches are showing up. So the next row, we do the reverse of what we've done on the row behind. The row behind. So the first stitch here is going to be a front post, and you can tell because it's sticking up a little bit. So you're following what you did on the row below. Um, so I'm going to work around this front post here, and again for a much more. Oh, sorry. For a much more detailed waffle stitch, have a look at the waffle stitch video. Um, then the next two stitches, we're just going to work as regular double crochets or regular UK trebles. And there, one, two, see. And then we're following the work as it comes. This one is a front post stitch, so we're going to come around under that front post. Then work the treble. And then the next two are sitting back, so they're just regular double crochet US UK trebles. And you can see this working in the three stitches, the repeats of a three. The next one there is a raised front post stitch, so yarn around, round the post. So you see on the back, if I just spin this round and show you, on the back it was two raised post stitches, two front posts and one regular, and on the front that translates as two regular, one front post, two regular, one front post. So it's a bit like... Um, just following the pattern as it already shows once you get past the first row. So here we have two regular trebles or US double crochets and the next one is a post. So I work two just regular US double crochet UK trebles into the next two stitches and then a front post one here. And then the same two regular and then a front post. I just want to show you, you can start to see the waffle shape really forming, can't you, in these squares. So then there's two regulars. And then a front post. Two regulars. And front post stitches can be used for so many things. Cables and all sorts of fun. This one is a front post. And then we work a regular treble into that last 
turning chain. So chain two and we're going to change, turn around onto the next row. Let's have a look at row three. So we turned onto the reverse side, the wrong side of the waffle, and it works in just the same way. We follow what we already have. So I'm going to work a regular double crochet into this stitch, double crochet US uh, UK treble, and then two front posts, regular, two front posts, regular, two front posts, and that's how it goes on. So you follow what you've got here. Um, which makes it really nice and easy. And this is why waffle stitch is a very fun thing to do if you're making a big blanket out of something cosy because it traps the warmth. And when you make it in, in a woollier yarn, I'm using cotton here uh, because it's tableware, but if you were using a woolly yarn, it's such a nice stitch for a scarf or for a, a blanket. So just work these just to show you. So here I've done two front posts. This one's a regular one, two front posts, and then a regular one. Now the two front posts here. And you wait till we switch over onto the other side and you see this waffle stitch coming. And then a regular one. And then two front posts. I think this is so also why it's so satisfying because once you have the setup done you're just following the stitches that are there and that makes it easy to remember. Two front posts, two front post stitches there, we'll get under the post. And then a regular stitch. Two front posts, regular, and again look at just so you can see that I'm following what I've already got. So these two are front posts. So if it's sitting proudly up towards you, you know that that's a front post stitch. If it's looking as if it's sitting behind, that's just a regular. And then I'm going to do a regular. Um, double crochet, treble, UK treble, and then just work a treble into that chain at the end. Now, if I turn this round, you can see the first lovely waffle, that lovely square appearing. And as that goes along, and the more you work, you'll see lots more of those squares making a really fantastic waffly pattern. Now let's have a look at the placemat when it's looking a little bit bigger. So this is the whole of my placemat. Let's have a look now at the size, just so you get a sense of how big it is. So this is 42 centimetres across and 26 deep. That's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28 rows to give you that size. So when you reach that, and don't worry, all the details will be in the description at the bottom. Here I am, top left hand corner. And what we're going to do is to put just a row of US single crochet, UK double crochet all the way around the side to give it a really, really nice edge. Now at this point, if you wanted to, you could um, create a really nice patterned edging if you wanted to, but I'm just gonna chain one. In fact, I'm gonna chain two because I'm on the corner there. And I'm gonna work just um, UK double crochet, US single crochet all the way around the edge. And where I have, um, not necessarily, when you work down the rows, you can put a stitch in for every row. Sometimes you might find you're putting in two stitches for every row, and that's okay. Just work your way down so that it looks really nice and even. I'll just show you what happens when we get down to 
the other corner. And this just sort of gives it a really neat edge. And if you wanted to, you could put a much more decorative edge on it. You could put a pico or a bit of a shell edge, um, or all kinds of edging. But I find if you keep it fairly simple, it it's not going to curl up. Because if you're going to have it on the table, the last thing you want is something that's going to curl up. Or that you have to, if you get it out of the washing machine, then you have to sort of press it or block it or do something to it. So I'm going with the easiest option, which is just a plain edge. I'm just going to show you what we do. Sorry, I keep grabbing that through the yarn, which isn't very clever. I think it's this hook. Let's get the right the way down. Two. The edge. And really this is very, it's a very relaxed little edging here. But as I go down to the edge, what I'm going to do is to put two chains as I come around the corner and then work into the corner. And by adding two chains in, I'm giving it more of a square. And I'll show you this as we go along the bottom now, just as I've worked around. I put two chains in just to give us a more square corner there. And so, and do this on the right side. You could even work the other way and make it crab stitch where you work your single crochet US, double crochet UK backwards. Also looks very nice. So I'm going to work all the way around the mat and then we'll come back to look at the primroses. Now, I have used about three and a half balls of Paintbox Yarns Cotton DK to get a mat this size. So if you want to make something that's bigger or a table runner, you'll just need more yarn. Um, but this is quite a nice size for either one place setting or something to sit in the middle of your table. So I'll see you when I get all the way around. So here we've got our lovely little placemat with the edges nicely evened up all the way around with a US single crochet, UK double crochet. And now we're going to make to stitch on some of these super cute little primroses. Now you can use anything you like to make these as long as it's cotton, um, yarn scraps, bits and bobs, you don't need very much yarn um, to make as many or as little as you like to stitch on in however you want to do them. So let me show you how we make them. Now I've got here some paint box cotton DK and just fold that out of the way. We're going to do the middles in this lovely daffodil and I've got a ballet pink to do the next part of the flowers to do the petals and you'll need a scissors and obviously a yarn needle for sewing in. So the first thing we're going to do is make the middle of the flower. So if I get the one I've got here so you can see as we go along. So the first thing we're going to do here is to make the little middle of the flower and we do that and it's only one round that we use of the yellow for the middle. We first of all make a magic ring. So the way that we do this is, and, and again, there are lots of ways of doing this. So if you are comfortable with it, you make your magic rings the way you're used to. This is how I do them. So with the yarn just hanging over your hand here, take it around your two fingers like that. Pop the hook under the first thread and grab with the hook edge, the actual hooky bit, grab underneath and pull it through and twist. Now as I let go, I've got the tail end of the yarn pointing over here to my left and on my right there with my finger is the yarn that's attached to the ball, the working yarn. And I'm just going to bring that over to the left hand side so I can start working. So the first thing I'm going to do is 
chain one, which sort of secures that. And then I'm going to work, we need five double crochet UK, single crochet US into the magic loop. So I've got one, I'll just hold that steady for you, two, and when you're putting these um, single crochet US, double crochet UK into the magic loop, into the magic ring, sorry, you need to make sure you're doing it over the top of the tail. So I've got the tail hanging down. Let's just straighten that out. I've got the tail of the yarn over here and I'm crocheting these double crochets over the top of the tail and the circle, the ring. Three. So it doesn't matter if they're quite baggy these because they're going to pull in in a minute. One, two, three. Four. Five. Now when you've done five single crochet US, double crochet UK into the magic ring, just make that first loop a little bit bigger and holding onto it with one hand, you can pull the tail. And when you pull the tail of the circle, what happens is magically it pulls in to form a lovely neat little middle of your flower. Now I'm going to just pull that down and I know it's small for you to see, but I'm going to slip stitch into the first double crochet UK, single crochet US there of the circle and just pull the yarn through there and through the loop. And so then you have that little tiny middle, which is five stitches. And when you pull the tail of the yarn, that middle will close up. So first thing I'm gonna do is just snip off the yellow. And notice, I leave long, long tails. The reason I leave a long tail on anything I crochet or knit for that matter, is so that once you've finished whatever you're making, you've got enough of a tail to weave in so that it doesn't stick up. And this so often happens when you see a beautiful piece of work and then an end sticking out. So I always leave a really long tail. Right, for the petal, I'm gonna start off with this ballet pink yarn, this really lovely, I'm just gonna pull it through there. Oopsie, ready to start this next row because we're starting with a new color. So I get the working yarn and I'm going to just slip stitch into the first just to secure it the first stitch there, there and come through so I'm now ready to work the first petal so I'm going to chain three one two three and then we're going to make a bobble stitch. And the bobble stitch is a bit like when you're trebling together. So I'll show you how you yarn around, go into the stitch and pull up a loop. And I'm bringing the loops quite high here. And that's because I want the petals to be quite high. Then I'm gonna yarn over and just pull through two. And I'm gonna do that another three times. Yarn over into the same stitch, pull up a loop to the same height, yarn over and pull through two, yarn over into the same stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and then again into the stitch, yarn over, pull through two. Now if you look, we've now got five loops on the hook. The first one is the chain three and the other four are where we've sort of got unfinished trebles. And then we're going to yarn over and pull through all five. Now that brings us up with a very sweet looking petal and I'm going to chain one on the top. 
So that brings the first petal. Now what I'm going to do is to slip stitch into the next stitch. And just bring your yarn up and round. And when you slip stitch, it has, it has two effects. It starts to curl the petal round a little bit, but it also almost kind of gives it this um, curled up appearance, if you like. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to chain three. And then I'm going to work the same kind of bobble. So yarn over into the stitch, pull up a loop and make sure that your loops are kind of the same height as the petal before. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over into the stitch and pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over into the stitch, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through two. Last one, yarn over into the stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. And then when you have five loops on the hook, yarn over and pull through all five loops and then chain one. And then I'm going to come round here and slip stitch into that first next little petal there. Now if you like making flowers, you might be interested to know that, because this is a Kate Eastwood pattern, Kate Eastwood's got a lovely book out which is full of how to crochet flowers and um, I'm just going to make another petal now. In the next one there, yeah. Um, a lovely book of how to make flowers and leaves and all sorts of lovely things um, that's out. Uh, definitely worth a look in your favourite book supplier. I think Kate has several books out actually. Um, all of homeware, all just great investment books to have. So we've got five loops on the hook, yarn over, pull through all five, and a chain. Then I'm going to slip stitch into the next so little stitch in the yellow, and then do it again. One, two, three, yarn through three chains. Yarn over, back into the into the stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, into the stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, into the stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, into the stitch, pull up two. And there we have five on the hook, yarn over, pull through all five, chain one and then we're going to come back down slip stitch into the next one and here we have the last petal number five one two three yarn over into the stitch and pull up a loop yarn over pull through two yarn over into the stitch pull up a loop yarn over pull through two and then we until we have five of these on the hook. One, two, three, four, five. Yarn over, pull through all five. Chain one. And I'm going to slip stitch back into that very first pink stitch. So let me snip off my pink yarn. Now sometimes with these things, you need to fiddle about a bit to make them really lovely. So I'm just going to pull that yarn through to finish off. To really pull that um, middle of the flower together. And there's that just sweet little primrose. And these look just so pretty together. Now when you sew your ends in, and again, this is why I always say, make sure that you've got really nice long ends. You only need to leave one of these ends left to sew it onto the table mat, your place mat, but just make sure that you really sew those ends in. And when 
you're sewing in the yellow, you can make sure that you've actually really secured the middle so that it's nice and tight with the magic ring to make uh, the middle solid. You might like to have the middles open a little bit. It's entirely up to you. Just stitch them in. Not a very sharp scissors. And so, when you've got lots of flowers, I've made a few here, which I haven't sewn the ends in yet, we can decide how we're going to place them on the mat. So here's our placemat. And you could do lots of things. So you could maybe have three in the corner there and three down here. You might want to make the odd one here and there. It's entirely up to you. And you can play with how you'd like them to sit and where you'd like them to sit. And when you've decided where you actually want them to be, then you can sew them into the placemat. And just make sure that you sew them on the right side and then you secure the back. So I'll show you when I've finished this one. So there we go. I have sewn on a little cluster. I like a bit of it sort of slightly off center and a little bit random, but you could put as many of these on as you want to. Um, just use up any cotton that you have in your stash to make them all. You could make them maybe without the yellow middles and make some beautiful almond blossom and maybe embroider a few stalks on. You could do all kinds of things. So that is my, well, Kate Eastwood's original pattern of a springtime placemat. Well, I hope you enjoyed that wonderful waffle extravaganza. You can make these lovely placemats in any size that you like. You can make it into a table runner or make an individual size one like this, as I have. There are 64 colors in the paint box palette. So you can choose so many different combinations of paint box cotton aran to use for your placemats. I'd love to know what colors you're gonna make, how many flowers, how are you gonna do it? Leave me a comment and tell me all about it. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more tips, tricks, tutorials, and fun projects just like this one. Happy crochet!